guys can see that this is brutal. We're up kind of up in the Virginia mountains and we're actually trying to get to, we're trying to get to um, Kellerman's, which is, we won't go there today. I'm gonna wait and try and go in the morning so it's decent out, but we're trying to get into Kellerman's, which is where they filmed Dirty Dancing. I'm only about 40 miles from there. But I'm not going in with this kind of weather here. I'm going to wait till it's somewhat clear tomorrow to film there. But um, I've always wanted to go there. I've, I've never been in a car where it's where it's uh, you know nice and easy for uh, uh, mileage or whatever. Um, believe it or not, in this Subaru, I'm getting I only run 55 miles an hour, but which that's just it's just who I am. It's just how I go. But um, anyway, with that, I'm only, I'm getting 20, about 27 miles at a gallon, almost 28 miles a gallon. So I'm getting really, really great mileage. But, uh, this, uh, this is insane, man. That's just terrible here. This crap, it's been, it's rained the entire, um, almost 200 miles I've traveled today. But, uh, anyway, we'll, uh, keep plugging along, trying to get up to, uh, Kellerman's, which is actually, uh, uh, Great Mountain Lodge is the name of the place. It's not called Kellerman's. I thought it was called Kellerman's, but it's not. This is such a climb. I can feel my uh, ears popping, um, but I'm almost there. <clears throat> Way up into the mountain here. And that's trying to get up here. And of course, it's going to get foggy again, which really stinks. But I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try and stay right up here at the, at the lodge unless it's closed. But, about three days ago and it it gave the schedule of the uh, restaurant and uh, um, didn't say it was closed or anything but I never got anybody on, on the actual line but look at this god this really really bites I'm hoping this will clear off tomorrow Again, I don't even know where the heck I'm at. I'm gonna cut this off and put my uh, my GPS back on to see, because that might have been, I might have had to take a right to go to that way to get to the actual thing, the actual lodge. Well, once we got up to uh, the lodge and everything, we stayed the night and uh, hung out. And then uh, it really turned out to be a really nice morning. So this is the Kellerman Lodge or the Big Mountain Lodge. Uh, they used it as Kellerman's in the movie. And what they had here, right here is exactly where Baby and the car pulls up and they get their bags out and all that and then kind of go into Kellerman's there with Kellerman's in the background. And I see why they uh, did this uh, movie here, why they filmed it here, because um, it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, really a cool place. So anyway, yeah, they filmed a little bit here, not a lot, but a little bit here. Um, you know, you'd think Johnny Castle came out through there and walked over here, but I, I don't think he did, but they did film the actual restaurant scene right here where baby and the family and everything was, was there. And, uh, you can see, I throw the picture in there with the plaque. And then this is kind of, this is, the, you know, in the right day, this would be beautiful to be out here on, you know, this part. But you can see out here, it's just terrible. But I'm going to try and film tomorrow. Um, so, oh, th maybe this, let's see, during the first night at the hotel, baby walks up the steps and across the porch. She walked from the porch 
as Johnny had a, the confrontation with Max and Robbie. But uh, yeah, you know, so we're gonna continue moving on. So yeah, this is kind of the, not really the, kind of the basement, it's kind of the lower level, which is really like the first floor. And I was just kind of exploring around all these different uh, rooms and stuff, yeah. um, kind of like, um, oh, conference rooms and that kind of thing. And then this here, I don't, I'm not sure if they filmed anything down here or not. This might be actually where all the film crew stuff and everything was. And, uh, but walking, if you walk out over here, now this is part of where Baby walked up the steps and uh, kind of came up into Kellerman's here or whatever. But uh, like I say, it's a beautiful lodge. And I think the uh, maintenance guy, I talked to the maintenance guy a bunch of stuff about this. And I think they own like 2,000 acres here. It's just a huge uh, place. But um, yeah, if you walk down here, uh, this is kind of where, uh, you know, the bag, you know, after the bags and everything, or even the, that night, baby kind of walked up through here, and that's how she got into the thing. And if you look across to the background over there, you can see that's uh, where baby and uh, her parent, or the, the parents and stuff stayed. Yeah, this was the steps that baby walked up, up here, and then uh, kind of walked into the, into the Kellerman Lodge or whatever. But uh, they've got about 10 plaques here like this, of all over where they uh, filmed everything and, and tell you whatever this was here was kind of out front was where they did all the activities um, the pool and stuff was not there the buildings and all that was not there you know this is 30 years uh, um, 30 years ago so a lot of that stuff wasn't there now the funny thing is is the lake is not there anymore the lake is dried up and talking with the maintenance guy I guess the lake dries up about every 30 years which is really bizarre, but it is, it's, there's just two tracks out there. And of course the lake or that lake was where they did the, uh, you know, the lift scene. Now here's, this is the house where baby and, and her uh, family stayed and everything. And you can see in the movie, you know, she comes out of there and that, and this is really a cool uh, little uh, bungalow or cottage. They also filmed right up in here where they did the, uh, was the uh, little music place or whatever, where, um, the uh, Johnny Castle and Baby, uh, you know, practice for the dance and stuff. But if you can see off to the right, you can see that the, the, the uh, um, actual lake is just not there. But anyway, the, the maintenance guy said every 30 years that the uh, lake would uh, just dry up and just disappear. And then it would slowly come back. And they own the whole lake, this lodge. And then uh, down at the far end of this so you can see the lake on the right it's just all dried up but at the far end they've got some cottages down there and the maintenance guy said those are just amazing beautiful and we're the highlight of the of the cottages and stuff but uh, yeah I walked around here and talked with uh, the maintenance guy quite a bit and, and you can see the pool here and everything um, and then you see the main lodge in the in the background and that but the, all this stuff was not here back then and that's where they actually drove the car right down here where they'd see Kellerman Lodge and kind of come around and park in the front and that's where the baggage and all that stuff was uh, pulled out of there. Now I did have some footage of the gazebo where they did the famous dance scene and uh, whatnot but uh, I couldn't find that footage. I don't know what the heck ever happened to it. It's been about four months ago and I, I must have just lost it on somewhere or whatever but I did film that but that's there right by the lake but as I said the lake is is dried up but the uh, gazebo is, is there and everything and uh, the beach and everything is really not uh, existent anymore because the, the lake's dried up. But, uh, but then they have a little plaque where they showed where they do the uh, lift scenes on the lake and uh, whatnot. But there's, yeah, they give you a little piece of paper here and you can go around and see all 10 spots where they filmed and everything and uh, whatnot. But uh, it was really, really cool. Like I said, it's been, you know, on my list for a long time. Well, guys, we are on our way to uh, Lemon Holton Cancer Center because of uh, we got to do a more of an in-depth biopsy. It's called an infusion biopsy, and they'll target an area that they found um, some hot spots on the MRI with contrast um, two or three weeks ago in a quadrant of the prostate. So I have to go do this 
and then we'll get the results if they come back as a positive to those hot spots or that one major hot spot they call it a hot spot lesion I don't know just what I've read so we'll uh, kind of go and uh, get this done and that is what's basically dictating what we can do this summer and maybe even dictate as to what we can do this coming winter um, so anyway yeah we're gonna head down here and uh, get this done so anyway we're headed up to sweet 5500 And that's urology on ecology. Well, so we just got done with the surgery of the uh, infusion biopsy or whatever and they follow they follow with the probe to get a real into where the little lesions are there was only one lesion but they take three uh three uh biopsies of that lesion definitely a little sore i mean they got pretty deep in that in that prostate to Well, guys, it's kind of crazy to uh, share all this stuff with you, but I just want to be uh, transparent, I guess. So anyway, um, when I got back, I had to do an MRI. And I had to do an MRI um, because he just, it was just a requested MRI. And... Um, the, the, I did the MRI and like I said, I don't know all this stuff. I mean, if anybody wants to read through this, they can read through this, but, uh, it basically came up with a lesion, uh, prostate cancer surveillance. The patient has positive prior positive, you know, prostate biopsy highest. I have a Gleason score of six group one, which is definitely pretty low, um, so we'll go back here, which made it to, I had to go and do a, what's called an infusion biopsy. And here's the pathology on, which was with Conrad. Um, um, a thing there. So anyway, on my prostate, and this has happened, they've done almost 50 core samples of my prostate. And this one says the left base, which this is the second time. And and adenocarcinoma, Gleason 3 plus 3, 6, one of two cores, so just one, which is a 9% core tissue measuring one millimeter in length. Um, the rest of it was benign, but, so we can get out of this because, it, uh, we can get out of that because it doesn't really matter, but... Um, so where we're at is, yeah, I basically for the past four years have had prostate cancer, but it has been such a minor, small amount that that's all they've done is active surveillance on it. And uh, so I just got the call back from the pathology, which was Dr. Tuber, which was a radiologist out of the cancer, uh, they call it the, the uh, Miracle Mile, which is a big cancer centers in Grand Rapids. And I've got some video of that when I went down to get that done. And again, it was only the one small piece. And even that the lesion that they found on the MRI, um, he went, that was the whole point, he, it, what they call an infusion biopsy, which is kind of a... Um, 
what they do is they actually go in and, and do a, go right to that lesion. And he went right to that lesion and took three samples from that lesion. And then he took another 12 core uh, sample, which I didn't think that's what he was going to do. I thought he was just going to do the uh, the lesions um, or that area. But anyway, all all said and done. So he calls me and says, uh, you know, the, ba the, good, the bad news is you do have one small amount of endocarcinoma, which is cancer. You do have prostate cancer, but it's the most smallest amount and it's the most, um, I guess, inactive amount. And his suggestion was we just watch it from year to year. So then all that information got transferred up to Ludington, to uh, the, the uh, urologist there. And he, I talked to him yesterday and he said the same thing. We just keep an eye on it. And it's like, you know, I'm getting tired of kind of looking at it from year to year with a time bomb in a way, but both of them have said it could never do anything. It could go for 20 years and never, never uh, move or never uh, ma uh, mastocize or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, again, I'm not a cancer specialist. I've read everything I can think of on it, but that's the best I can do. So anyway, that's where that's at. And so that opens me up to another good solid year to go and do what I want to do. And I don't know if anybody knows uh, much about, you know, deer or whatever, but what happens is this little fawn crosses the road and soon as you kind of confront them, I don't know if it's instinctual or what it is, but boom, they'll just hit the dirt, lay out in the weeds and kind of play the dead thing, you know, and then, uh, um, you know, and, and so they don't, you know, it, it's a way of perturbing a, you know, predator and mom, I don't know where mommy is. <laughs> Look at you, you little shit. What are you doing? You need to get up and get going. You need to get up and get going. Go on. You little bugger. <laughs> Guys, I hate to say it, but you know, these Subarus are so incredible. I mean, I'm back in here in some crazy ass places. And this little Subaru is gonna get me back to this little lake and I'm gonna be by myself. I mean, it's a weekend of a lot of people and it's crazy because believe it or not this lake's got like 16 people camping on it but nobody has challenged to come back in here but these little subarus you know they've got four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive and they've got a little bit of ground clearance which isn't bad but i want to get back in here and i'm going to be able to camp back here and <laughs> You know, I, you, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't be able to do this with the bus. That is, uh, that is for sure. But yeah, and there's all kinds of pine back in here. Most of this is all red pine. Um, so there's plenty of pine back in here to go ahead and have, uh, you know, a campfire. But yeah, this is crazy. Now this part here might be a little tricky. Yeah, I'm gonna have to back up in that, but man, this campsite is the bomb, man. Now I know another great place to go camp, but I wanted to come in here and I wanted to come in here and catch a couple of pike for some dinner, you know, and have a nice dinner. Um, I'm kind of on the windward side. Let's see if we can sneak around here. Oh, come on, baby, come on, baby, let's go. Oh get in here I don't know what that was but but what a what a great little campsite huh we're gonna park right up in here somebody's fishing over in my fishing hole yeah all right let's jump out and check this out man this is killer killer spot killer 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 spot man I mean, look at this, look at this spot. Great place for a little bonfire tonight. I was gonna go over to this campsite over here, which I know of, but there's people over there. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna worry about that, but yeah, there's one boat out here and that's kind of my little spot, but right over here is where the pike are. 
I fished this lake before. If you guys remember um, from last year, you'll see that uh, we fished this. Um, so yeah, we're hoping the wind is gonna, it's a south wind, kind of a south, I think it's a southwest wind, but um, a ton of people over here camping. I wanted that spot right there, but somebody's got it. But you know, this is this will work. This is all right. I mean, this is a great spot. This is just a killer spot. And I can turn around in here. I've got, uh, like I said, I've got some wood. I'm gonna gather a bunch of wood up, get things squared away. I threw some wood on as I came in, which, you know, this is some good dry pine. Um, but yeah, we can have a little bonfire later tonight. We can cook some, uh, hopefully cook some pike up. I'm going to uh, see about putting the, uh, kind of the tent right up in here. And uh, anyway, that's where we're at. I mean, how nice can, how nice is this? Well, we've got the hammock set up and I hate to say it, but <clears throat> on my trip, I really would like to do the hammock more than anything when it comes to, uh, you know, then rather set the tent up, but we will be getting a tent. And I need to take this tent that I picked up in Raleigh. It's a great tent, don't get me wrong, but it's too big. I'm gonna try and get rid of that here in the next couple of weeks and pick up a Bubba Hubba, Hubba Bubba, which is put out by REI. But we've got the uh, canoe, we threw the pole, we're gonna throw another pole in, we got the tackle box and stuff. And we're, uh, just kind of getting camp ready. We'll go get a bunch of wood. My knife sharpener. We gotta get a bunch of wood so we can have a little fire and everything. But uh, yeah, we're just trying to get stuff ready. We've got our camping gear or our cook, cook gear set up here. And let's throw this in here. And uh, we picked up some grease uh, oil. I wanted some peanut oil, but they didn't have any. But uh, we'll use whatever. Like I said, the only thing that bothers me is this guy over here with the boat. Now, I don't know, you know. I mean, there's plenty of fish for everybody, but who knows? I don't know what they're even after, but he's right out there right now, right about where the pike are. But I'm I'm going to wait another cuz we're on we're on the windward side, which kind of stinks, I'd, but you can't get on the leeward side. So we're on the windward side, unless I took the canoe and paddled over and went up and camped in there, but um, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna, this is a nice little spot. I mean, you can't, uh, you can't go wrong here. So we're going to uh, just chill out and get some wood, get things ready to ready for tonight. And then we'll go out here in about an hour and see if we can't pick up a pike or two for some supper. Catch, cook, and camp. Well, we've got uh, some wood here and stuff for our fire. And we're kind of ready to go. Got everything in the canoe. Um, got everything set up over here. Probably do, like I said, stay in the hammock tonight. I just don't know if this wind's going to let up. I mean, we're going to go out and give it a try, but man, it's... She's blowing pretty good. I'm going to give it another half an hour, which will put us into about five, a little after five. And like I said, we're a little bit protected over there, but just want to go over and pick up one pike, you know, something to, I picked up some stuff to go with it. Um, what did I pick up? I think some pasta stuff to go with it and stuff and uh, some mashed potatoes and that kind of thing to, uh, um, have uh, with our pike and stuff. I ended up, I think, I don't, I don't know if I ever showed you's. <clears throat> I picked up a really nice pan for, uh, that we're gonna, I think, take on the trip. It's a little heavy, but, you know, when we're done, we can just chuck it, you know, but it's a beautiful pan, you know, I got it for, I got it for like five bucks. It's brand new, so, it's, and the, you know, no, no, I take it back, eight bucks out of Goodwill. But it's going to be a great pan to cook fish or anything like that in it. Um, um, even like a steak or something. I'm going to boil some water in here. Um, yeah, it's just, it, you know, you can't beat it. I mean, it's it's like brand spanking new. It's like a $50 pan for 8 bucks. So that was a good gig, you know, right there for sure. 
Well, I do have to say it's, uh, this canoe is amazing. I mean, I haven't really used it much, um, but it is a, it, it's a, it's an amazing canoe. Um, I mean, it was $700 brand new. I got it for nothing. Somebody gave it to me, as you guys know, but from watching my videos, but you know, it's got a keel, so it's just got a nice, tra it's a little short. So that means I'm going to have to, uh, you know, limit my, um, gear, I guess. I'm going to have to limit my gear, but it is an amazing canoe. Um, but we're going to get out here and get doing some casting and see if we can knock out something. The, the wind is not horrible, but again, it's not great either. Well, it's really gotten nice out here now, but uh, it's, uh, I think it's getting close to seven o'clock. We've been out here two hours. We fished hard. We got one little pike, very little pike, but there's no size limit on this lake, but uh, it's small, but uh, you know, I'm hungry. I really, I haven't had any fish in six months and it's like, I am starving for a fish. So I'm going to take it and harvest it and uh, eat, uh, eat that pike and have some, uh, mashed potatoes and some uh, pasta with it and whatnot but i'm gonna fish a little bit longer because the wind has died down it's actually beautiful out here so i'm gonna go ahead and fish for a little bit longer but man it is i don't know i this will be the last time i hit this little lake it's just uh you know it's just not uh just not producing um just very disappointed well guys it just doesn't get any better than this Oh, we got a nice little fire going. Got the lake right here. We, like I said, we got a little pike here. I hated to harvest them. I really did. I got the oil set in here. I hated to harvest them, but you know, I, I'm really, really, I love to fish, but I love eating fish. So I was so hungry for some fish and uh, I just, I haven't had any in a while. And it's, I, you know, thank you little fish for, allowing yourself to grab a hold um like i said we'll hit another lake here in a few days we'll try to go up and make a little more money but we got a nice little fire going we had all these pine uh <clears throat> these pine uh, needles and stuff made for a quick and easy fire i'm gonna let it kind of die down here a little bit and then we'll put this little bit harder wood on here and stuff so we can maintain but what a beautiful beautiful look i mean how come on really and that's what i mean when it comes to the when it comes to the trip that I want to do, uh, this is what it's all about, man. I just want to, I just want to paddle day in and day out and just see the stuff and just enjoy the water, catch some fish, cook my meals, have a little fire once in a while, um, kick back in the old, uh, you know, the hammock or, or tent, whatever it be. I'd rather be in a tent tonight. I, I, I don't know. The hammock is, uh, it'll be all right, but but God, it's just so beautiful. There's a, uh, well, last year there was two beautiful uh, um, loons out here, um, a, a male and a female. And I did see the male out here a little while ago. The female might be on the eggs. Uh, uh, they have a nest over in that area, but uh, usually every year, but um, it's just, it's just so beautiful. But man, I fished and I fished hard out there, but nothing. Like I said, I don't think I'll be back here again um not not at least not to fish um because it's just not this lake is just not uh it's not that good it's just not a great producer but but i've got other ones so anyway we're gonna have uh a beer here and uh kind of get this fire under control and get things ready and get stuff ready to go for supper well guys i'm gonna do my little rant here you know, and you've seen the video, you've seen this campsite, and then you get this kind of stuff. It's like, please do not do this to our beautiful, look at this. Ah, oh, please. Wilderness and forest, it's coming to a halt. We're losing it. We're losing it every day, 
don't do it. Please don't do it. Anyway, that's my rant. I don't want to get into a big thing, but gosh, that just burns my... So we're, uh, we're gonna cooking our fish. Oh my God, I had one piece. Unbelievable, look at this. Look at that shit, golden brown. Ah, unreal. I already had one piece. I'm gonna let it go for a little bit and then we're gonna do our other stuff, get some pasta going, and we're gonna have our fish. Dudes, unreal. How can you not enjoy something so simple? Come on, people, really. Beautiful. So, yeah, we uh, got offered uh, another boat, and uh, it's a CNC 29.6. Um, it's got a little Yanmar diesel in, uh, in it, um, which is pretty nice. And um, it's got an auto helm, but uh, the auto helm, the disc wheel, um, the guy's wife, it was locked in, and she turned the wheel and broke the, the disc wheel and stuff. So I'm going to try and look at finding maybe a used one or something and save the, uh, you know, 530 bucks that it is for the new one. And, uh, but we'd like to get the auto helm going and that. It's got a new compass and stuff, but, uh, you know, she's a, she's a good boat. <clears throat> Nothing to get uh, completely excited about, but um, I'm just kind of, you know, just got down here. It's got a nice uh, stereo system and really nice control panel when it comes to the thing there. Decent radio and stuff. And as I said, you've seen the little Yanmar uh, in there running or whatever. And it does have a new uh, water pump. A few new parts and stuff that uh, are, are needed. Um, let's see here. It's got a uh, Genoa and a main, or a jib and a main. And let's see here. But it is, uh, it's extremely uh, in need of, uh, you know, the deck pretty much really all sanded down and then a two part epoxy paint put on it because that's probably the the worst part of it and it does have a hatch here that's busted and gone out to see what I can't do about sealing that it's got a through hole mast which is good but also bad because it's a little harder to to remove and pull out with all these lines and stuff nice nice roller furling on it I'm gonna try and get the uh, head sail on tonight as you can see they put us in here today and I I think they wanted me to get going today but I don't want to do it tomorrow's gonna to lay down and be a little bit more on a calm and I can just kind of I just want to make sure all my systems are up to par because I'm by myself so I've really got to make sure everything's working I just changed out uh, both belts on the Anmar both belts are very loose and kind of crappy and they had two brand new belts so I put them in it's got self tailing winches which is kind of nice and everything can be done right from the cockpit so that's you know it's kind of nice it's got all through uh through the mast uh, lines and stuff but we do need some new lines we're charging up uh, some stuff with the solar here other than that i guess that is about the extent of it um these are just horrible they need to be replaced i'll have to look at that somewhere down the road but both of them are they both leak a little bit and you know it's typical um other than that yeah it's um i guess that's really about the the extent of it you know of course typical v birth nothing there but it does have a new uh, all new some new plumbing in the toilet and again it's got uh, a water pump down here so it's got uh, uh um water um you know running water if you fill the fill the fuel fill this system up it also has a hot water tank in it but i probably will remove that because it's only going to run on 110 and uh and it just takes up space back here it's actually stored back down in here in this uh, lazarus or lazarus uh, but anyway um the one thing i really do like it's got two uh, propane tanks one there 
one there. It has the propane safety device here, and you turn it on here and there, and it keeps from safety so it doesn't leak. But it's a two uh, little two burner uh, hob uh, propane, and uh, that's nice. You know, it's got the little foot pump, and you can, you know, if you don't have the the uh, battery power for the 110 one thing i'm going to really have to get is a uh is a uh one good solar panel to put on this so i can keep these batteries topped and be able to use the radio and the stuff like that um i've been here about three days it's really a nice marina um it's got a pool and everything so i've been using that and uh so we're going to uh definitely uh hit the pool one more time today and uh We'll get out of here. We gotta go under two bridges to get out of here. First thing in the morning, we'll hit the hit the thing. I'm gonna put the sails up tonight because the, the wind's gonna drop. Um, it'll be nice having the uh, be able to sit back here and just relax, put your foot on there, and listen to some podcasts. We've got about a uh, 160 miles to go back to Ludington. We're right down on the border of Indiana. But uh, anyway, yeah, and you uh, know I got this boat. I, I'm not gonna say what i got it for um just because i get i get a lot of flack for what i get these for and i get them i get these boats for hardly nothing and uh people get i don't know some people get upset about it some don't but um you know i most people don't talk about the price of their boat so i don't i'm not going to do it either but uh i got it for like i say hardly nothing and she's uh she's pretty good little little boat um just needs a lot of stuff and it might be a boat that we're definitely i think we're definitely if we can pull the money we're gonna go to the bahamas the one thing that i really would like to do is uh i actually would like if i had the money i would like to get out of here you know it's gonna be first of july coming up i'd like to get out of here and go up through the great lakes here and just bum around hit some islands and uh, put in a bay and go right out to St. Lawrence and down the East Coast. That's what I prefer to do and never have to take the mast down. Um, but, you know, I just don't have the money for that. And, uh, I mean, I've saved a little, but it isn't enough. I, I could do it, I guess, but holy cow, it would be extremely, um, bare, it'd be really bare bones. I mean, I, I'd barely make it. But I'm going to work in uh, Key West this year and work on a boat. And uh, that'll, that'll uh, I think, work out really well. Um, yeah, they got the lift here, and they're putting another boat in. They've put two in since I'm here, but I'm on the T dock here, kind of out of their way. And I know they probably want me to get going, but I'm going to try and milk it out. So I um, already the the wind has died already uh, compared to this morning. But I don't want to leave leave this late because I don't want to come into a port at night. I'd rather, um, you know, I need the full day to get up to where I'm I'm going to make my first stop. But all right, let's catch up with you a little bit later. We are doing eight knots, Danny. Eight, almost eight and a half knots. I mean, it is just, it is just cranking. I'm gonna pull the jib in a little bit because it's just hauling ass. Well, we are on a on our little shakedown cruise, so to speak, I think we did 60 miles yesterday, and it was mostly a flat, uh, flat sea out here in Lake Michigan. Just, uh, I think it was only about five knots, less than one. We got three to fives today. Um, so basically, a downwind uh, sail, but she's a little dicey out here. A little, it's not as nice as it should be. Um, but uh, we just got the head sail up because I just can't, I can't put the main up and control, control all of it my, myself, by myself. Um, you know, it should be more of a flatter sea. It should be leveled out and be a nice sail. But it's, uh, like I say, it's a little, uh, a little rough out here, a little choppy, I guess, if you want to call it, which we call it for, it's a little different than the ocean. But anyway, we'll go up here and we'll dodge in. Tomorrow's going to drop down. I think we're at 15 knots today. It'll drop down to about 12. It'll be maybe a little bit better um, for our last little run. But so far, everything's uh, everything's going well. Everything's running uh, decent. And, um, today, we won't use any fuel. It'll be just all sail today and all sail tomorrow. And then the last maybe a little bit might be a little bit of motoring. But... Like I say, she's a little tough here on a down on this downwind. 
And again, it might be the main should be out and maybe the head sail pulled in a little bit, but uh, it's very hard to do by myself. The auto helm is broke. Um, I have to order a part for it and then it'll be fine, but um, they ended up, they broke it. And, um, um, and it was, uh, they had it locked in and they, they uh, grabbed the wheel and uh, broke uh, some of the wheel in the uh, Ray Marine uh, disc drive there or whatever. They broke them off. I can, I'll show you when I get a new one or whatever, but I would, I, I really, you know, you got to have the auto helm. If you're by yourself, you just have to have auto helm, but it's a beautiful day out. It's a nice sail. It's quiet. Like I say, she's just a little, uh, a little tough on a downwind, a little, a little dicey. Well, guys, we are only 10 miles from uh, making it up to Ludington, but we're in Pentwater. <clears throat> Good stop. I was doing eight knots yesterday. Certainly cranking along on this C and C. I mean, I was—I I haven't done eight knots on. I don't think any of my boats except maybe the Catalina, and I just had a head sail out. So we went in this morning, got some coffee, and we're just going to chill another day here, and we'll leave tomorrow and finish our trip off. Just because um, you know it's been three days on the water, just uh, pulling in and getting ready and going out again. We got some cheese and going to make some cheeseburgers, and we got some asparagus some chips and some salsa and we're just going to do some cooking and chill out have a little uh have a little nap or whatever and then maybe we'll uh maybe we'll take the canoe and do a little paddle or something uh this afternoon and we're just like i say we're just going to chill out and then work our way back up uh to luddington in the morning and then uh, get squared away and kind of start digging into making some money and then uh um, start buying some things for this boat. Um, it's just some things I need. Um, I want to get the fridge, the Alpacool fridge. I have another one already in Florida in the other boat, but I didn't have room. So I, I'll order another one. That way when I have the two, I got a freezer and a fridge. Try and order a solar panel. Um, a couple other things. Just trying to get some stuff that's, uh, you know, uh, designed for, uh, for our trip down to make it comfortable um, we got to put some screens in here here and one there which we have those but we got a nice little breeze that's kind of pushing through up here but it's not reaching back here now, again i wish that had a uh, i wish it had two separate ports here and here that you could open port lights uh, um, this one would be perfect but this one is uh in need of repair. I don't know. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that. I'd probably go up top and open that up yet, but I don't want the sun bearing down in it. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to working on my stuff here and, and uh, whatnot, but uh, all right. Happy sailing. <laughs> we are going to try and get you guys caught up to everything we basically have gotten about four months that we just haven't been able to you know get everything done i've just been so busy trying to uh, deliver the food and stuff and make some money but we basically came up from florida and we did uh, went to kellerman's we stopped at my son's and seen him then we got up here we had to go through all the doctor's appointments and all that stuff to get that taken care of and then we ended up getting a sailboat that fell into our lap for very little money and we ended up living on that for almost a month and we sold the Subaru put that money in the bank we ended up getting somebody offered us um, double what I paid for the sailboat and wanted it and so I sold it and I made uh, twice you know twice my money back which I wanted to do the trip really bad but I in a way I, did, I didn't want to do it it'd be my fifth time and I just didn't want to do it by myself 
So I turned around, got rid of that, and I bought, bought this little speed boat or little, this little fishing boat I've got and another little fishing boat. And we're going to make the trip down with some a whole bunch more freedom with this, being able to get on the islands and up on for camping and up the rivers and, you know, into the out to the keys there and into, uh, you know, some of the stuff to snorkel out on the reef. And we're just going to we're just going to live off the islands and stuff, camping and fishing and cooking and cleaning and, and doing all that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So when I got back up here, I had to get back to work, which kind of put it off there. I couldn't do the Missouri trip because I just didn't have enough money saved up to do that six month trip. <clears throat> Maybe in the future it'll be there, but it should be a lot better. I ended up getting a four dollar an hour raise at the store, which really made good. I went back and worked for them. We delivered some trailers and stuff, which we did last year. It worked out really good. So we've been able to make money. We're at about two weeks and we're out of here, heading for uh, heading down uh, Lake Michigan and down into the Mississippi and work our way down and uh, and make that happen and, and just start camping on the on the river and up on the uh, sandbanks and in all the all the uh, islands and stuff. We'll catch up with our other boat down in Florida and try and get that in and get using that. Uh, we got quite a bit of wardrobe from the store and stuff because we made a little extra money. So we're back up on a nice uh, wardrobe of shorts and, and uh, some nice shoes and uh, some sunglasses and hats and things of that nature, shirts. So we got all that done. We bought some stuff for this boat and I'll showcase this boat and everything because uh, I got a whole bunch of footage of stuff, but we'll do that in a while. So it should be a really great trip sorry it's been so long but you can get caught up on everything with with this next this past this video i just put up um in the next couple days and then we'll start shooting videos up maybe two a week for sure one a week of our camping and fishing and that we got a whole bunch of footage of fishing and camping and all that stuff already um but here's a little video on some of the couple bucks that's been coming down where i camp and stuff just you know anchored out off the shore there i got my own little private beach so they've been coming down and uh anyway that's about it guys and uh you know you know my life it's always a uh, uh, reality tv and crazy uh, different things going on but uh anyway we will catch you guys here in a few days with another video and we'll showcase this little, little boat that we've got that we're going to make our trip all the way to key west should be a blast and then we'll go down there and work maybe uh february march and april and then um figure it out from there from the next uh, next plan of attack guys peace out from the wayne diaries Oh, 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 oh,